Hey, what's going on, Rockstar Engineers, and welcome back to Packet Tracer 101. In this lesson, we're going to be covering network devices and all the common network devices that you would use to build a network in Packet Tracer. More specifically, we're going to take a look at routers, switches, layer one devices like hubs, repeaters, ASAs, and then of course, we'll take a look at wireless devices, access points, wireless LAN controllers, and so on. So to find our network devices, we can go to the bottom left corner of Packet Tracer. There's a menu bar that actually has two rows, one row here just below the blue bar, and then a second row below that. In the upper row, the first icon is network devices. And when you click on that, all the devices or the categories that show up in the second row below are all the network device options. So it just so happens that it defaults to routers. So when you click on network devices, it's going to display all the different router options available. But we can also see we have available switches, layer one devices, wireless devices, ASAs, and even service provider WAN emulation equipment. So first we're gonna take a look at routers and we have several different models to choose from. So we've got contemporary modern routers, which we have being used in the real world right now that are being deployed in brand new networks or just being replaced in networks. And those are 2900s, uh, 4300 series, uh, 1941s. Uh, they also have some older ones in here. We have the 1841s, some legacy 2600 series, some older 2800 series. And they also have some um, small office home office routers the small router 800 series and then they've got a couple generic routers and we're not too big of a fan of the generic equipment here we don't really use it a lot in the simulations and things that we do here uh, we like to use the the equipment that's tried and true that we've experienced before many many times so uh, we don't want to use anything that's you know uh, Frankenstein together by any means so uh, they also have the uh, 1240, which is an outdoor harsh environment router. And if you happen to be building a network that has like an outdoor cell tower, uh, then that might be something that you would uh, want to use with it. One thing to remember about routers is that none of them come with serial interfaces installed by default. If you want to use a serial interface on a router, you must install the WAN interfaces, uh, the modules, before you can do that. So keep that in mind. None of the routers in Packet Tracer have serial interfaces installed. So let's take a look at a router. Typically, we get in here, we can see that on the far left, we've got a physical tab. If we zoom in, we look at the back of the device here. The main thing that the physical tab is used for is that you can swap or install different modules into the box. Now, one thing about Cisco routers is the numbering on the back of the box and the ports and slots are numbered, not the way that we read here in America. We read from left to right and we read from top to bottom. These port slots are labeled from right to left and from bottom to top. So if I look at these four empty slots, slots here, the slot on the far right is slot zero next to that slot one, slot two, slot three, when it comes to installing cards. It, it's very simple, you, you guys understand here. Uh, you just drag it from the left and drag it into the slot. So that's very simple. One thing you need to remember is that cards or modules are not hot swappable in Cisco devices. So they simulate that here for us. If I were to try to drag this uh, serial port uh, card here, I get a warning saying that I can't do that. And the reason that I can't do that is because the device is powered on. And if the device is powered on, it means I can't hot swap it. So if I were to try to install this card with it powered on, it would just pop like a fuse. And that would be a very, very expensive fuse and we don't wanna do that. So what we need to do is go down to the power button and just power it down here. So we power the device off and now we can drag the card over. And once we let it go, it'll expand in, fill the, the slot there. And now we can power the device back on. And now I've got two T1 serial ports installed. So again, the most common thing for physical view is for installing or changing network modules that you have in a device. And next to that, we have our config tab. Our config tab uh, provides some limited configuration capabilities. And I'll say that the config tab is not the tab you'll ever use when you're configuring a device. So the things that I use the config tab for are when I've got a device in my network that I would consider a hop in the middle. There's nothing really happening on this device that's important. It just happens to be the guy in the middle to get to the other important device. Then maybe you don't have to go to the end of the command line. I can go here and I can change the display name to R1. I can even change the router's host name to R1. And then when I click save in the bottom box here, you'll see the configuration uh, be saved. So now the host name is indeed R1. There's some other basic settings I can do. I can configure some static routing, VLAN information, etc. But I can't obviously configure everything that I can configure in a router, right? 
There's no NAT, no DHCP. So there's a lot of things that's not available here. Uh, it's very limited stuff. You would use it, but anybody who's worth their salt won't really touch this tab. You'll go straight in the command line and configure everything from there. So these are the three main tabs. This attributes tab is one I often will hide in my networks. It's the physical attributes to the device and will really have no bearing on what you're doing or uh, using Packet Tracer for. So remember in the CLI tab, one of the options that we had under uh, preferences was to make the CLI tab our default tab. So we'll see when I go in, I click on router, it opens to the CLI tab, and without it, it will open to the physical tab by default. But I set this option this way on purpose. So that's your basic router, how you install serial interfaces and use the physical config and CLI tabs. And we're gonna see that most of the other network devices have these three same tabs. And next on our list, we have switches, and we've got some more contemporary switches, starting with layer two, the 2960, which is the tried and true workhorse of modern enterprise networks and we have the 3560 and the 3650 those are both multi-layer switches and those are both also very common out there in modern uh, enterprise networks and we also have some other older models some uh, 2950 series and even an industrial switch an ie 2000 so that's meant to be used in more harsh environments and they also have some more generic options and again we steer away from the generic options and some of these are just uh, switch chassis with uh, empty slots and you can fill them with what whatever cards you want in them. So you can just custom build a switch that you want there. Uh, just be aware that they're available if you want them. So we'll look at switches here and we see a layer two switch. This is a 2960 physical tab. There's no modules that are swappable. There's nothing we can really do here from the physical view. Uh, the mode button doesn't do anything. You can click on it, but it's not real. Uh, config tab, same as a router. You've got some configuration things you can do from here, but if you're really gonna be configuring the device, you don't touch this tab. You go right in and you know, you get in and start doing whatever it is you're gonna do from the command line. So same three tabs on switches and routers and they perform the same three functions. Next, we'll look at a couple of categories. First, layer one devices. So hubs, repeaters, coaxial splitters. You're probably not going to be using these things, and they are found here in layer one device category, but we've got hubs and we have a repeater, which is really just a two port ethernet switch. Uh, whatever comes in one port goes out the other. And then a coaxial splitter, just like you've got at home if you got cable TV. It just uh, it splits one cable and comes in one side and you know, so you got two cables and it goes to another. So uh, if you have like two TVs, you know, and you only have one cable that comes into your house, it'll split that cable so that you can run that one cable that goes into your house to those two different TVs. We, you probably won't use these, is, would be my guess, though, in here in Packet Tracer. But if you go through advanced training here at NextGenT, you are going to be using some ASA devices. So ASAs, you would go over here under the security column, and we see here that there are 5505 and 5506 choices. So if we look at one, we notice that it's got the same tabs as the other network devices. Physical tab and nothing swappable here. Config tab gives you limited capabilities. CLI tab is where it all happens, of course. This is where you're going to be configuring it. So that's where you're your ASAs are. And lastly, our wireless devices. So with wireless devices, you've got access points, all different kinds. You've got the APPT, which is just an autonomous access point. There's some special ones. There's the APPT for 802.11, AAC or M. There's also lightweight access points, and we'll take a look at those. One thing to remember is that lightweight access points do not come powered on. So you must connect a power cable to them. They have the most minimal of configuration options on them directly because lightweight access points are meant to be configured using a wireless LAN controller. It's very important to note. So wireless LAN controllers, there's some options there. There's the 3504, the 2504, and there's even a generic one, one port wireless LAN controller. Uh, there's also some home office or small office routers. And then of course there's the wireless access point router slash everything switch that you would get if you have you know uh, wireless access or internet access from a uh, cable provider and they provide the equipment to you it comes in an all-in-one type of device uh, they have that covered there as well uh, so let's take a look at wireless devices the common ones wireless LAN controller uh, we'll look here and we've got a physical view nothing swappable we've got a config view and there's not a lot of options here I could change the display name I can enable or disable the physical ports maybe change the bandwidth or through 
throughput and the duplex on it. The important one that I want to note out of this one is the management IP. Uh, you can change the management IP, but notice that there is no CLI tab and there's no GUI tab. And that's because in the wireless LAN controller, it can't be configured directly. We actually have to open up a web browser in order to access the management IP. We also have just a regular access point here. We have the physical tab. This actually has an ethernet module. And if we wanted to, we could just swap out the module with uh, you know, any type of gigabit or fiber. And uh, just note that you know, if we zoom in here, we could see that this right here is swappable. It also has config tab with limited configuration items, and it's got a wired port and the wireless port configuration options. Not a lot to it though. Next, we have the lightweight access point, which is meant to be used with a wireless LAN controller because the wireless LAN controller gives the access points their configurations. So if we zoom in here, we could see that there's a power adapter, and that's really the only module that's available on the physical tab. So we'd go to the config tab and notice it says, device must be powered on. What? So we go back to this and what do they mean? There's no power button. Well, here's the power cord in the bottom, right? So we have to drag this up and we have to connect it to the port. Now it's powered on. Now we can go to the config tab again and we're very limited in the things that we can configure on the config tab because a lightweight access point gets its entire configuration from the wireless LAN controller. And then the last item here is a wireless home router. If we zoom in here, we have different ports, nothing swappable. We go to the config mode and as predicted, very limited capability of the things that we can uh, configure on this tab. But the difference between this and the other ones is that the home router actually has a GUI tab. So I can go directly in and configure those wireless things that I need to. The one thing that we really need to remember, and they make it as difficult as possible, is that every single configuration page here, uh, when you're done on this page, is that we have to go and scroll to the very bottom and click Save Settings. Otherwise, we didn't make any changes. So we have to make sure that we scroll all the way to the bottom of there and click Save. Very, very important. Now the WR300N is the wireless module for that device and it's the only one that comes with that installed. All the other network devices do not come with wireless modules installed. Only that wireless router does. There's also some commercial devices. If we look at the bottom, we'll see that they got some real heavy duty stuff here, like a cell tower. They've got a central office server that has coaxial connections on it. And we've got a WAN emulation cloud. And what it is, is it's supposed to be like the uh, multi device that behaves like your service provider in the cloud. So it's a cloud device that has multiple different kinds of ports. And yes, there are modules you can swap in and out, but it has an ethernet port in case you want it to be your ethernet WAN service provider. It's got serial ports in case you want to connect through service provider using serial point to point connections or even frame relay encapsulation. It's got a coaxial port so you can connect a cable modem with a coaxial cable to this thing and get internet access. It also has analog ports and they call them analog modem ports but what they really are are analog phone ports. So you can have analog phones at your sites and use the public switch telephone network to get there. There's also what they call a packet tracer cloud empty and all it is is a chassis with with 10 empty slots and you just choose what to put in. So the difference between PT Cloud and PT Empty is PT Cloud, they've pre-selected some modules for you, but you can swap them out. So that's it for network devices. You can go down and hunt through and you'll see all the options, but what I've covered here is probably a little more than you're actually gonna be using when you go to configure networks in Packet Tracer. Now, if you're ready to take these labs and your career to the next level, follow me over to NextGenT, where we could take you from zero to rockstar engineer. Links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this series. Stay tuned, because there's plenty more to come. Are you ready for something new? Break into IT or cybersecurity with the Zero to Engineer program and join thousands of Next Gen T students switching to tech. Our program is designed to take you from zero to engineer, training you on real world projects and making you job ready. Don't wait any longer. It's time to level up.